Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Centre for Legal Innovations event on looking at innovation and disruption in the UK. Um, I'm delighted to introduce Stephen Ward and I will come back and do a little bit more of an intro in just a second. There's a few um, housekeeping matters that I do need to go through. Um, firstly, this event is being recorded, so I want to mention that specifically for you in terms of any comments that you might want to make or questions that you may want to ask, um, we will be capturing those. So I just wanted to kind of mention that up front. Um, I wanted to also thank Stephen, not just for today, but he's been on a little bit of a road trip for us around uh, New Zealand and Australia. So he has um, visited with folks in Wellington uh, through the kind hosting um, of the venue through Buttle Finlay. He's also been uh, in Auckland just really a week and a bit ago um, with Russell McVeigh and now here obviously at the College of Law for his only Australian appearance yeah, in Sydney. Um, so we, uh, we do hope that you'll enjoy this. Um, you know, I find obviously this whole area fascinating. It's probably a good thing because as the director of the Centre for Legal Innovation, it would be bad if I didn't. Um, but particularly the sort of story that Stephen's going to tell. Stephen has um, been working in barristers' chambers as, as a clerk and senior clerk for a long time. Um, but what you'll learn about today is kind of his, I guess, journey really into becoming, I'm going to call you a legalpreneur, Stephen. Um, which has been an award-winning journey um, into, uh, I guess now, managing uh, and speaking about Billy Bot, which you're going to hear lots more about and you've probably read about in the press as well. So a deep background in working in the law, a deep background in the sort of functionality that he's going to be talking about today, um, as well as an amazing journey, which I have not done justice to. Uh, but you will find Stephen on LinkedIn uh, and you will find those details also when we place the video up on the website. So enough from me because we want to spend lots of time with you Stephen. We do need to end today sharply at two o'clock because Stephen is squeezing this in before he catches the plane home. Isn't that amazing? So Stephen without any more to do, you're very welcome. Okay. Um so what, what, what I propose to do, um, I don't know if people can hear me, I wander around a bit so I can see there's a, another microphone there. But um, So what I was going to do is just introduce myself and just explain a little bit more about uh, who I am. Um, Terry wanted me to give you a little bit of a, a feel for what's going on uh, in the UK and what my views were about whether that was good, bad. Um, if anyone can't hear me or anything, just wave and I'll shout a bit more. But. Um, what, what, what I want to try and do to start with is just manage expectations and, and the first thing I wanted to explain is that I'm here on holiday. I'm not, I'm not a professional speaker, um, so standing up and doing this is quite daunting, especially having it uh, recorded makes it even worse, but there we are. Um, so I'm not a professional speaker, I'm here on holiday, I have nothing to sell, I'm not trying to sort of, uh, you know, end up with hopefully you buying my software and I think I'm here to share with you what we've done. Um, Terry picked up on LinkedIn that I was coming out here and, and said would I be kind enough to come and do this and I said I'd be absolutely delighted. So it's, it's, it's a fun event for me uh, and what I'd like to do is hope that I can give everybody here something by the end of it. So it's very very difficult when you're talking about technology as I'm sure you know because some people's knowledge is really uh, great and some people have no idea and so what I don't want to do, I, what I do with all my talks is I keep the language very very low level um, if anybody wants to go into any more detail about anything, please do wave, uh, wave your hands. If, if I literally just talk and nobody puts their hands up or asks any questions, then it's going to be a relatively short talk. Um, so I'm really hoping that people do sort of say, can you explain a bit more or how did you get on with that or, or whatever. So, so that's my little uh, uh, managing expectation. So on the, before I go into sort of what we've done, our story and, and uh, Billy Bott and so on, what I, what I wanted to do is just run through what's, what's happening in the minute. So just before I do that, um, just, a, just a quick bit about me, just to put it into uh, perspective where I've come from. So I left school at 16. Um, I got a job on a building site. I was working on a building site and somebody came over to me one day and said, have you ever thought about being a barrister's clerk? And I said, what? 
what's that? And they said, well, you have to go to London and work in the temple. And I said, no, 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 I'm not interested in religion. So, you know, thanks very much. Um, we'll leave it at that. So when I told my father that story over dinner in the evening, he said, you stupid boy, the temple in London's where all the lawyers are. Go back and see him and, and see what it's all about. So he sent me up to London. I had an interview and I started pushing trolleys around the temple. Um, that was, I'm 50 this year, so that was 30, you know, 34 <coughs> years ago. Um, and basically, you know, what I'm going to talk about today is my experience and then, and then where we are now. Um, and, and what I want to try and do as well is, is you know, the theme of this talk is innovation. Uh, and I want to really leave everybody in this room with no, you know, with a very clear view that anybody can in innovate. Uh, if I can do it, then, you know, anybody can. So this, this I, if you haven't seen this map before, um, it's the, the legal geek map of what's going on in, in, in legal tech at the minute. Um, this slide is rolled out at every conference you go to uh, and I've done about 50, 60 in the last two years so I thought well I have to include it as well. Um, but what's really interesting is you've basically got the categories over there so you can look this up online um, and, and look at it in more detail but it's got the subcategories to say what, what, what are they, uh, what are they and you've got legal documents um, as a service, you've got uh, contract management, contract analysis and cyber security. So you can see that the innovation is going in only really a few themes and this map here shows mm -hmm. really where they all fit into that, that sort of um, thing. And then these ones over here, the graduates, um, what they mean by graduates is they're not startup companies anymore so they've really started to actually become, I guess, they, I guess that's profitable but I don't know, but, um, so there's not many uh, out there that are actually doing well. And, and Kim, for instance, is a, is, a, is a really good one, and that's, um, so there's a lot of deal room technology and that sort of stuff going on, uh, document analysis and so on. Um, so yeah, so uh, I, I'm going to make a little bit of a shock statement here, just so everybody is completely clear. Um, I'm going to talk about AI through my talk, uh, artificial intelligence. I live down in Somerset in, in the West Country, and AI has an entirely different meaning on a farm, but... Uh, so you have to be careful about the terminology you use. But um, so basically, uh, I've we, we we will refer to things as artificial in, in, in intelligence. But I just want you to be aware that I struggle with what that really means because if you teach a computer or a robot to do something and it does it again, I don't see how that's artificial intelligence. It's only if it's doing something of its own accord or it's learning itself. So just to put that into context when I talk about a couple of other things, because I'm not going to stand here and say, oh, artificial intelligence is the way forwards, and everybody go, well, what does that actually mean? Because I don't know. So people say to me, will artificial intelligence change everything? <coughs> um, but what it really means is, is it's process optimization. Um, and again, I, I really hate all these sort of words that people use because you know, I, I'm probably stating the obvious, but process optimization is just taking a process we all do now and just make it a little bit more efficient. And one of the things that uh, I found fascinating when we started on, on building our uh, robots and software and chatbots was it, it, a, a really good tip I can give to everyone is if you're, if you're wondering where to start, start by looking at what you actually do at the minute and I, I couldn't believe it. Um, you know, I, I've run my business um, hopefully quite successfully for a long time. And I started to say to all my staff, we're going to sit down and actually write out what you do. Uh, and they were horrified because they didn't want me sitting beside them. But after about an hour of sitting beside the first person who was absolutely terrified, um, you know, I'm saying, why do you do that? Why do you do that? I said, wouldn't it be easier if you did it that way? And, and I've never done that with my staff, which is probably a bad thing for me. But by writing it out, so the whole process of the innovation and the software development starts with sitting down and looking at what people do. And then when you've got all the different roles sat there and you're saying, well, why, why do you do that? And you, you've all heard stories about, you know, reorganizing an office so you don't walk an extra pace to the photocopier or the printer or whatever. But um, so we did that and we realised that my junior clerks were basically doing 172 different actions in any one particular day. So jobs are quite repetitive, you might, you know, your phone calls might be very different, but the job itself is quite repetitive. Take a phone call, note it down, put it in the case management system. And 
the process optimization, I heard this bit of um, uh, terminology in a conference in London. I think it's brilliant. And when I asked in Wellington and Auckland if anybody had heard the terminology swivel chair technology, nobody said they'd heard it. So I've got a, I've got a nodding over there, so that's good. But I, it, it just appealed to me. I thought it was brilliant because I suddenly heard somebody talk about swivel chair technology. So we've all got more than one computer system in our office. We've got the case management system, the marketing system, CRM, whatever. And if you literally take information from one system and then the way it's demonstrated is swivel around and then type that information into another system, then that, that swivel chair technology is where you need to start looking straight away because machines need to talk to each other. Um, and, I, and I, you know, this is why I say it's a low level sort of talk because everybody in their office has got examples of that. And I think, however, I used the word bullshit before, but we're being recorded. So, you know, however much bullshit you hear out there, um, th there are just really basic things you can do. And that's, this, this is where we got started. So um, legal advice and contract management, uh, uh, e-discovery, and then a few examples there of, of, of things that are, that are really happening and, and doing really well and, uh, at the moment. So what, you know, t Terry asked me as well, what, what should we avoid? You know, what, what, what's, what's really not happening? Um, and I really struggle to put something on the slide for that. And I think, I think it's really just the hype and the claims and the sales pitches, because one of the things that I realized straight away is I'm not really interested in what somebody's trying to sell me. I'm interested in what my problem is and what it was that I think we could do more efficiently. And then the minute you go to your software people, your case management suppliers, and say, you know, if I had a pound for every time someone said to me, well, no one else has ever asked for that, so we don't know why you want it. And it's like, well, they haven't asked for it. That's called being innovative. So, you know, don't, just, just don't be afraid to, to talk to your, um, your suppliers and, and say, you know, wouldn't it be good if it could do that? And if they say um, it can't be done, then I say, well, that's fine. I'm going to start talking to suppliers who can do it. And all of a sudden they realise that, you know, that, that your monthly fees you've been paying them for a long time might be at risk and they start suddenly realising that they need to change the software and then you get what you want and so on. So, you know, what, what should be avoided? I, I just, I think... I don't, you know, people have said to me, do you think New Zealand or Australia or, you know, who's ahead, who's behind? And I, I, I struggle again with that one because I think we're all in the same boat at the minute. Um, and I don't think it's really law. I think it's just life is changing. I mean, you can't buy a gadget now for the house without it coming with a phenomenal um, instruction manual. And it's, and I think it's not about... Um, about what that gadget can do. It's about how user-friendly is it for you and does it save you time and, and so on. Um, mm. Since I've been over here, I've spent hours trying to master various coffee machines that people have presented me with. So um, well, I was training to be a barrister. So. Oh, sorry. Um, so this slide here, I don't expect anyone to read it or whatever if someone asks for the slides later, but that's the, 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 the explanation of what innovation is. And I think personally that everybody's doing that all the time anyway um, and so I think anybody who says they're not innovating if you're looking at what you do and you try to do it better so when I started in in chambers um, 34 years ago um, I was presented with with one of these and you know I I had no idea what to do with it and to take it over to court I was pushing a trolley across to court and to take it off to cross court I had to have a carrier bag to put it in um, and then, you know, that's, they only came in when I first started. So, you know, for people to say, what are you doing now? I think we have always been innovating. We, we've moved from telex machines to fax machines. And the fact you could put a piece of paper in and it came out somewhere else the same was remarkable. Um, and so, you know, I think, I think we are all innovating and I think it's actually happening around us all the time. And we're all, you know, talking to Robert earlier about, you know, remote desktops and working from home and you know it's all becoming easier to use cheaper to buy um, what we all have to do is work out what the solution is that we're trying to find which is how we lead on to, to, to Billy Bob um, you know and this is something else we were talking about I think one of the biggest problems that people have is their structure within their firm um, and certainly a lot of the conversation in, in, in the other talks I've done is people sort of nodding and going, 
yeah because you know I, I i just think it's not it's not a taboo subject it's just it's it, it it's where we are um lawyers who manage law firms are not always the best people to get involved in innovation technology projects um and we well the, the bit of advice i can give is is i i managed to start getting stuff through quite easily when i was really honest about what the expectations were so we'd i'd always been trained to because i'm working with lawyers I'm trying to say, well, I can almost guarantee that we'll save money and I guarantee that will be better and we'll get our money back in this period of time. But with technology and software, I can't guarantee how much it's really going to cost because everybody I've spoken to says it's going to cost more than you think. I can't really confirm when it will be working. I can't really confirm if it will do actually what we say it's going to do and if actually that's what the client wants when we get there because you're innovating. So you build a bit of software. Um, when we first built the, the first version of Billy Bond, um, we got some user people in to do user testing and we realized straight away that well, they weren't using it in the way we thought they would. But it was a relatively small change to then go. So managing the expectations and, and, and accepting that you're probably going to fail with, with some things and, and breaking it down into bite-sized points has been the absolute trick um, for what we've done. So, um, you know, that's, that's it. I mean, the, the other thing, I don't think I've put it in another slide, but the we're going through this process with the court service at the moment, Her Majesty's Courts and Tribunal Service, where they're saying um, we, we're going to put everything online now. And they've basically gone uh, gone out there and they've said um, to Professor Suskind, who's sort of helping on the committee, and they've said, here's a billion pounds, now can you build the system? Now, I mean, I've never heard anything so ridiculous in my life as the government saying, here's a billion, can you write the specification? You know, it's, it's never done that way around. But the one thing that they are going to do is build it in very, very small boxes. So if they get it wrong, so everybody's saying billion pound budget and you're only going to, say, take a payment online. And they're saying, well, we're going to start with that, test it to death, make sure it works, and then build more and more boxes that will connect together. So we'll see. I think it's going to take an awful long time. Um, but that's because of the committees and everything else. I don't think anyone will ever agree on specifications. So it's, it's a bit of a pain. So um, I've just done these before I go into to, to our sort of um, journey, just to really get a feel from, from people here. Um, if there's any technology or, or um, if I've used any terminology there that people say I've never heard of, what is it? All of those technologies I think are relevant to law. Um, and so, you know, when I started doing, attending IT conferences about two years ago, um, I was overhearing, you know, things like blockchain, that's my my, my one that I still am baffled by. Um, but if there's anybody in the audience who says, I haven't heard of that, or can you explain a bit more about that, I can, I can give you a very, very basic uh, understanding of any of those. Um, and I'll, I'll use blockchain as an example, because has, has, how many people here have heard of blockchain just for, right, okay, so really good. H has anybody actually seen, a, seen it in use, being used? Have, brilliant. Was that which one is which example is that that you've seen? Um, there's various solutions coming out of UI. Okay, cool. But yeah, accounting side. Um, well, looking at supply chain. Okay, cool, cool. Because um, what what the experience that I that that I can can explain is um, and why I think it's relevant to lawyers who who should at least be aware of what it is, even if it's not relevant. Um, I think it's AXA in the UK have developed a travel insurance policy um, and so what they're doing is it's a smart contract so you go online and you fill it out and you say if my flight is delayed um, then it will pay out X amount of money um, and what it does is the, the contract itself holds all that information about your flight and whatever um, and then it's permanently pinging the flight radar system so it will go, well, no, they're not flying for another six months and blah, blah, blah. But if you, what, they, what AXA say is if, if your flight is delayed and the claim policy needs to pay out, the contract uh, is a smart contract. It just does it automatically. So the money is paid into your bank as soon as the flight is delayed. And they reckon their advertising is you'll be paid out on the claim before you pick up your suitcases if you've been delayed. And what that's doing, I think, interestingly, is when I heard the chairman of AXA talking about it, he said everybody hates insurance companies, says they'll never pay out and they've no intention of paying out. They make it as difficult as possible. So they've dealt with that because they've said we, we will pay out. The flight's late. There's your money. But it, when you think about it from the other point of view, there's no human interaction whatsoever in that contract. 
and and it's it doesn't even need to use the banking system you know if if the other party could receive the money so from a from a legal perspective i think smart contracts and the use of blockchain is something i can see coming not for a while and i don't think anybody needs to panic about it but it's a it's a very interesting way of executing a contract or certain things happening at, at any point throughout so I, i'm not a lawyer as you hope you know so um but artificial intelligence i've talked about that machine learning is another form of that deep learning the same chatbots i'm going to talk a lot more about in a minute swivel chair i've just mentioned natural language processing is fascinating has anybody actually had any experience of using natural language processing um, if you haven't it's really really good fun um, so what what our, our robot does billy with them um, <coughs> plugged into ibm watson which is the natural language processing and you can this everybody talks about million pounds to go and do any project with ibm watson it's complete rubbish it is absolute rubbish it, you can go on a pay-as-you-go version it costs you pennies so you can get a lot of marketing uh, hype out of yeah we're we're plugged into ibm watson and we're doing that which is what i'll explain how we do in a minute um, but it really doesn't cost anything i probably pay 100 pound a month something like that uh, it's all done on a number of queries and things that go through so what, what with natural language processing uh, a chatbot or a, a software system or whatever will get a piece of uh, get a question it doesn't understand so it goes to IBM Watson it says this is the question I've been asked and the natural language processing processes that can go out and look at the answers from wherever come back and then tell our chatbot well I think that's the question they were asking and then you can get a much more refined answer so um, uh, again something really good really useful for the clients clients love it because they can get information and, and things um, out of hours and so on um, and it's really cheap to do um, so application program apis i'm going to talk a lot more about that in a minute as people here know about apis no some right i'll explain about that because that's the key to, to to what we've done again big data cloud and user experience that uh, uh, two years ago I sat in a conference and the, and the speakers were talking about UX testing and all this stuff and it was going way over my head and I'm just sitting there thinking if you just keep talking about NLP and UX and all this I have no idea. So over the time I've sort of got to understand it and the user experience testing if, if, if you know it, people either do it or they don't and you know if you do it you <laughs> totally know the, the benefit of it but we've picked up so much with, with, um, with doing the testing and making sure that what we think is the software people want is actually what they want and it's and again you come back to sitting with someone in your office and looking at how they're using software and, and you're really pretty much doing the same thing so you know try not to predict what you think someone wants um, so you know what, what are the next steps if you're looking to innovate um, uh, and say this is just general discussion because I'll come on to our real live example in a second um, but understand that your problem to trying to trying to resolve, um, and I do appreciate this is very very low level. But you know, look inwards, not outwards, as far as I'm concerned. Um, you you can you can immediately find something that you can improve on, um, and then you 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 start to realise that the software might help you do it, and you can write something and so on. Um, ask yourself what good looks like um, from the from the client's point of view. Um, a, a lot of the things we've done, we've saved time and money um, and then of course in, in my view what what you get is you then get a choice as to what you're going to do with those savings so in the example I'll come to we've given the staff more benefits um, because they were panicking that you know we're doing all this to simply make them redundant we're saying no we value your staff we're just trying to make life easier um, you, you if you're saving money you can make more profit that's fine um, but quite often in, in the big law firms at the minute, people are using the technology to give the clients better experiences um, and to give more value for money. I think there's a bit of a race on at the minute as to how much value um, you can give clients. And I'll, I'll show you the examples of what we've done on that. Um, so when, you, when, when you've identified the problem, start to, to, to work with the solution. So, so, I mean, that's my sort of very quick zip through um, of where the technology is um, you, you know I, I quite often sit in a conference like this and I think yeah yeah I, I knew that I didn't learn anything personally I'm really comforted by that because I think 
what I did know is what other people are talking about as well. If there's stuff in there that really frightened me, I'll go away and think, oh, my God, I need to learn about that. So is there anything we've talked about before I go on and talk to you about Billy and, and our example? Is there anything that I've said so far that I should have expanded on or, uh, or anything? So any, any points of interest? No? Okay. So um, I'm going to zip through BillyBot. And again, if anybody wants to ask um, how we did certain things or whatever, um, just, just shout. So first of all, um, BillyBot is a trainee junior clerk. And people keep saying to me, why, why, why is he a trainee? You know, how, why have you built a chatbot as a trainee? Um, first of all, we wanted to manage people's expectations. Um, it, it's, it's been hilarious. When you, when, you, when you have a chatbot with a personality that is a trainee, you can get away with all sorts of things. And so clients say, oh, that, I went on, it was rubbish. I go, well, he's a trainee, what do you expect? He's only 16. And they go, oh, sorry. <laughs> it's really, pe people can sort of relate to him, and it's, and it's really funny. And when we're talking to the developers, a lot of those are really young people, and, and I don't know how young people talk. Um, I don't know the phraseology they'd use. Um, and so it's been a lot easier for us telling our developers who are quite young people, you know, they come to me and say, what do you want him to say when people ask this question? I say, well, what would you say? They say, oh, okay, well, I'd say this. That's, that's fine. So it's not, it's not a sort of a replica of me and the way I would do things because we're all sort of quite mature in our office, but this is, we're having a lot more fun with, with, um, with, with the language and so on. So the other thing is we, we wanted to train him as, as a junior clerk because it was a bit of a cop-out really because we have a training manual for a junior clerk we've trained loads of them over the years so we have a training manual so it was easy to give that to the developers and say well that's what we're trying to teach him but the thing with a junior clerk is it takes us two years to train a junior clerk and then they might leave or whatever and and so on and every single junior clerk you get in you've got to do that over and over again so the thing with with building billy bot was we could train him and then if we've got him right, and he's really good member of staff, we just cut and paste and we've got another one. So, you know, you, you're, you're spending that money uh, up front, but once you've done it, you've done it. Um, and it, and it's, it, it's literally working through the training manual. It took us three months to train Billy to do what a junior clerk does in, in, um, in, t in two years uh, and works 24 hours a day, doesn't have any time off sick, um, doesn't even have lunch and vouchers. So, you know. Um, so we had the training plan for the junior clerk, um, and, and, and what we found when we started writing all this down, because we had a training plan, but we didn't write down how we do the task, and that was really fascinating, and that was really what took the hardest work. Um, and we realised, as I said earlier, that our junior clerks are doing 172 tasks, basically, in a day, uh, and it's really repetitive. We do about 1,500 court hearings per month, uh, just in our bit. Um, so we have three, three sections of the business, but in the main section where Billy helps out, um, w Billy can process all of those court hearings and do all 172 actions in under a second, whereas a junior clerk will take at least 20 minutes if they're really good. So we ended up you know, look, getting lots and lots of efficiencies. And as I say, we can, you, you can cut and paste and you can build extra modules and so on. So. Um, we gave Billy Bot a name because we wanted to personalise him, um, and we, we, his personality is that he's got a sense of humour, um, as most junior clerks who come from Essex and, and, and East London have a sense of humour. Um, we've got Billy's got a sense of humour, so a bit like um, Alexa and, and Cortana and all that stuff. If you ask Billy a really stupid question, he gives you a stupid answer back, um, and we've let the developers do quite a lot of work on that because everybody that's come on playing with him. I mean, I, you know, we, we don't mind anybody playing with him, so you can go online, have a chat with Billy and swear at him and he'll tell you what he thinks. And has he got a girlfriend? And he's, yeah, he's, 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 he's going out with robot Lisa, but every time he talks to her, she sends him an NDA because that's what Lisa does as a, a robot. So he's got quite a lot of personality, which, you know, at the end of the day, people would say, well, how's that? benefit the business but it benefits the business in marketing in you know in so many ways and just even the staff in the office think it's funny and they come to me and they go oh wouldn't it be really funny if you asked Billy that and he said that and you go send an email to the developers so the staff can engage with it 
Um, but we, we have a, a whole layer of Billy which the public don't see, which is our internal admin level, which, which helps us do loads of tasks that we're trying to do in a day. And what we've, what we've done is we've given certain people rights to log in and change the, 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 the wording. So, for instance, if, if you ask Billy to, to book a case in the diary for you and he does it, he sends you an email back and he goes, right, I've done all your work for you, you know, don't know what you're doing today, that sort of thing. And, and that changes quite regularly. So quite often we'll be sitting there and you'll suddenly just hear someone cracking up, laughing down there and say, oh, you wouldn't believe what Billy said to me today. And, you know, there's just a couple of people that can tinker around with that. So it's, it, it's good fun and, uh, as well as being serious and, and, and have a commercial. So what have we trained Billy to do so far? So, um, uh, again, I, I've, I've, I've done this because I don't, I think most people here, um, you know, there are people in your organisation who do pretty much all of these things. So, but we've trained Billy to do it, and and that's it. So, he takes new inquiries. He takes about eighty percent of our new inquiries now, um, because our customers um, who are we deal with a lot of insurance companies, banks, um, high volume people. So they just ring up and say, "I've got twenty instructions. Can you take them all down?" They prefer to deal with Billy because it's just so much easier. Um, and they can actually have a bit of fun with him as well. Um, so the first thing Billy will do when he takes a new inquiry is do the conflict checking. So he's talking to our case management system. Um, he then, if, it, if we're okay, there's no conflict, he'll create uh, the case within the case management system. Um, he then searches all the diaries to see, I've got 1600 lawyers that we work with. So he's, he searches that instantaneously. Um, he will then look at the availability and this is where I get most of the stick from other clerks and chambers around the country. They say, well, surely you're just, you know, de-skilling something that should be done by it. And you say, no, because all the parameters, there's 1.2 billion parameters in there now. So, and, and I don't know all those parameters. So, you know, Billy's more intelligent than I am, but the way he presents it, we don't, we make it sound a bit more fun. But if they want to speak to someone, they can ring us up and, and talk to us on the phone and talk to her a human but but more and more people are saying well no I really like using Billy and I can go in on the Sunday morning and I can catch up with my work and Billy sorts all that out so if you think about it offering availability it, it's it's he's looking at an Outlook diary through an API which I'll come back to in a second and and he's only really got three choices he's he's, he's either got multiple responses he can either say I've got loads of people available He's got one person available, or he hasn't got anybody available. There isn't, there isn't really any other responses. So for most of the things he does, as long as he's got access to the data, he can give a very specific answer. And we, we always let the solicitor or the lawyer or whoever's coming on make that choice. You know, if we've only got one option, he'll present it as, I can sort that out for you. Mr. Such and Such is available. Would you like me to book it in? If he's got multiple options, he'll say, I've got loads of options. Do you want me to book the next person who's that seniority and, and blah, blah, blah. There's whole loads of ways of doing it. Do you want the cheapest person? Um, you know, do you have a preference? Um, or do you want to look at the list and make a choice yourself? So all, all again, pretty, pretty straightforward. But they're things that in my profession have been very protective for a very long time. So managing those, uh, managing the people you're working with and, 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 and why it's helping them. I mean, I, I say to all my staff, do you really want to just sit there and do that over and over again all day? What if, what if I could give you some help? And they go, oh, great. They're, all they're thinking of is, are you going to cut my salary? Are you going to make me redundant? You know, how do I carry on with my training and career development? But assuming that you say all of that and you say, well, I'm going to give you, you know, so many more hours per week. And one of the first things we did was give all my staff um, an extra two and a half hours a week off so we didn't we, we increased we decreased their hours didn't decrease their pay um, and they immediately saw that by helping us to develop at Billy they got half an hour extra per day with their family so we went from a 42 and a half hour week to 40 so you know it, it was a one-off thing obviously I haven't got to keep doing that but it, it just meant that people could see a benefit from what we were doing not 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 a negative um, and, and so that worked well so he's offering availability. Um, he'll agree the fees. Now, again, people sort of go, oh, how do you do that? But the, the world at the minute, in, in my opinion, is moving to fixed fees. I, I think most lawyers don't like it. Um, you know, I hear the arguments all the time about, you know, it's price per job and all this. But, but for a lot of the work we're doing, the bulk work, um, people want certainty over fees and they want to know, you know, that's what I'm paying. So 
that works really well with chatbots and, 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 and APIs and databases because our barristers, we've got 1,600 barristers, they, they all fill out their database and they tell me they'll go, you know, uh, we've got 183 courts in England and Wales and I, I say to them, will, will you go to that court? No, I won't go to that court. Oh, not even for £10,000? Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I will. Right, so you have a value against how far you're willing to travel. So coming back to APIs again, active programming interface, I think is the correct terminology. If you think about it, Billy, Billy, Billy's connected to everything. So somebody says, will you go to Scunthorpe, uh, and they live in Truro, Billy can check the train times, he can check the travel, the Google Maps, they've all got APIs. Every single thing we use now has pretty much got an ABI, API. So Billy can say to a barrister, are you interested in doing this case? It's only £200, but it's a week away and the, the train line is telling me that I can get a ticket for £15 as a super saver because this hearing isn't until 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And so the barrister's decision, you wouldn't normally go for £200, normally you want to go for 250 300 or something, you know, whatever the example, but people will go somewhere given the correct information and, and, and so what Billy does is sends them a, an email saying are you interested in this case or anybody that's available and this is how long it would take you to drive from your home because we've got a home postcode, we've got a postcode of the court, you know we know all this stuff anyway, it's already in our system. So he can agree the fees with the solicitor because you know it's a slightly provocative point to put on a, a slide because a lot of our work is solicitor saying I've got this hearing, there's two lever arch files, so that's going to be about four hours reading, and it's going to take four hours in court, so that's eight hours, plus travel, ten hours. The barrister wants £200, so that's £2,000. And you've got, a, you've got a solicitor saying, my budget's two and a half thousand. Who have you got who might want to do that? And so we can immediately go back. So I've got five people who can do that. So Billy never says he doesn't have an option. He always says that's a tricky one. So mm -hmm. he comes back to the client and he says, that's a really difficult one, that's really tricky. I'm going to go and talk to my supervisor. So, and all that is doing is basically covering off the fact we haven't got an answer. So we then find the answer, then we, then we go back. And sometimes you have to, and what he can do as well is he'll say, if, um, if, if you want to pay 500 pounds, it's really tricky, but if you actually increase that fee to 600 pounds, I would be able to give you a solution now. And so, because obviously, again, you're just, just querying, oops, sorry, just querying the database, and, and, and we know that X barrister will go there for that amount because they've already told us. So, it's it's it sounds like it's really clever, but to be frank, it's not. It's just linking up the databases. Um, so he'll agree the fee with the solicitor. He's checked. He's taken the case, put it on our system, run a conflict check, check the fees, check the fees with the barrister, uh, put it on. Um, and he then sends out the written terms, so the client care letters and all that stuff, sends out electronically. Um, Billy's done all that before we even get to know that, that we've had an inquiry. Confirms the book into the barristers, uh, books the mediator. Um, so we, we, ha we have a large mediation section as well, so obviously it's the same, but it's dealing with two parties. So Billy's been taught how to do that. Um, he can set up conference calls for clients, so we've got 21,000 clients now, so we add it as a as a customer benefit is we offer free conference calling through our system because it's a bit of software that's been written and it doesn't cost us a penny. So you can go on and ask Billy to set up a conference call and he just asks who the parties are and he emails them out and says it's all done, there's the PIN number, there's whatever, and it's all completely free. So you know that was a sort of value added um, for, for clients. Um, he offers free legal advice. So junior clerks don't normally offer free legal advice. Um, but the reason that came about is we hear a lot of our clerks on the phone, you know, a lot of this research of sitting there listening to people on the phone, and, and, it, and, and it will be different things in all of your offices, but listening to what's going on and really investing that time. And we were spending probably half an hour with a lot of clients who had no intention of buying our services whatsoever. They just wanted some free legal advice. And we thought, well, there's masses of legal advice out there that's free on, on, on the net, you know. Um, and so what we did is we asked the providers of that free advice whether we could have an API into their system because we would point to the fact that we're using their system and they'd get more traffic and they said yeah no problem. So if, if somebody says to Billy I'm after a, a, some free advice, um, if you for instance ask Billy for a draft, uh, a, a draft building contract, um, he will go on to places like Lord Donut um, and so on. 
and he'll search their uh, database and he'll come back and say this is what I've found and what, what's actually happened with that interestingly enough is you know we look at the searches that he's sending out and the returning customer is quite high because they, we send them a whole load of stuff so they think we're being really helpful they go all through it and they think all oh, this is really complicated I need a lawyer so they ring us back and go, well, Billy sent me all this stuff, but I don't understand it. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to have to pay for some advice. And we go, yeah, fine. So, so actually offering free legal advice has been a, an in, it wasn't what was, we didn't set out to do that. It was just something that happened and it's been really good. So I'll put that on there. Um, and obviously we get quite a lot of clients who come on to us now through Billy who are not suitable for us. And we think that they would be much better off going directly to a solicitor, not a barrister. Um, and so, interestingly enough, rather than people say, oh, are you trying to compete with us now and take our business, they're now scrabbling to say, well, can I get, be friends with Billy and can I be in the database? Because if someone wants a contract lawyer, uh, you know, in, in, in Norwich, um, then we can do it. So, <laughs> um, so solicitors now are, 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 are wanting to be involved and, and, and that's a really positive thing. Um, Advanced searching on LinkedIn. I, I don't know if people will get the relevance of this, but to, to me, this is one of the most really, really interesting things. Um, I don't know how many people have actually got really into LinkedIn um, because it, LinkedIn is, is the most amazing tool. And I'll happily stand here and talk for an hour on LinkedIn alone. Um, but LinkedIn is written um, on Boolean search terminology and if you understand how boolean works you can google it and learn it within 10 minutes and all of a sudden you realize that i can't remember how many people 500 million or something i don't know i can't remember the figure but all of those people are in linkedin so if you ask billy can i have a litigation lawyer in sydney who i don't know speaks danish but billy will find that for you because he's he's basically got the api into linkedin which is free again all of these apis are free um, and that's a massive benefit um, to clients. It's never going to be something that we're going to be able to help with as an organisation, but we can put them off. And because Billy's doing it, we're doing it all for free. So, you know, there's, the more you can build up the added benefits for the client without it, you know, yeah, you've got to actually build an API and plug it in and that costs you, you know, a little bit of money, but, but it's done then. Um, and then make the coffee. Now, <laughs> pe people laugh and it's funny and there's no business case whatsoever for doing this because it's just a bit of fun apart from it's really good marketing and it's lovely when people come in the office so when when we first put Billy out somebody we, we, we managed to get a brilliant article in the Telegraph or the Times or something and one of my really good friend clerks who was obviously very jealous and annoyed sent me an email and sort of put a comment I think on the newspaper and said well he'll never be a proper junior clerk because he can't make the coffee so which to be fair is a junior clerk's job so I thought hmm fair enough He's got me on that one. So we have a, a Slack channel for the developers. If anybody uses techies and whatever, you've got Slack channel. So they're all on the Slack channel. So I posted well, a bit of criticism today. Billy can't make the coffee. Well, 15 minutes later, and this, the point of this story is because it's the power of asking people and developers to, to put solutions in for, for, for problems. 15 minutes later, the developer emails me back and says, right, try this you'll find he can now make the coffee. I'm like, what are you talking about? And what he'd done, the, the wireless technology that you have in, you know, all the things that are connected these days, your doorbells, your central heating, the coffee machine's got a wireless thing in it for, for some app or something. It's IFTTT technology. And he said, I've hacked into your app. And he said, and I've, I've built an interface for Billy. This was in 20 minutes a developer's done it. And he said, if you now ask him, so if you go on to Billy and say, can, I, can you make me some coffee? He, he comes back, well, do you want ground or filtered? And he says, well, I've ground. He says, how many cups would you like? And, it's, you know. and then he says, well, how strong would you like it? And then if you put a code word in, which I'm not going to tell you, the coffee machine in the office starts bubbling away and, and away comes your coffee. So it, it's really good fun when you're in the office because you can sort of say, you know, they go, oh, chance of a coffee. And you go oh, ask Billy to do it. And they're just stunned when he when he makes the coffee. So, you know, so it's it's a fun thing to do. Um, but but the moral of the story is, if you ask people that you're working with, just tell them the the problem, and and there are people out there that will very easily come up with a solution. So, this is my sort of real infogram 
Um, you know, it, it's we've got sort of 15 minutes, but but really what what, what I've tried to do here is demonstrate uh, what the APIs are. Um, and when we first started building Billy, all of the API cogs um, just had question marks in um, because we'd worked out what we were trying to achieve, but we didn't know how to do it. And over the last two years, uh, uh, there's one missing. I'm conscious that you're recording this, but there's one missing that's here. And why do you think that is? Because it's a firm of solicitors that we're dealing with. And it's the only one that can't get their board to understand why we might want an API. So they still want, when Billy takes an inquiry for a solicitor, we have to email it to them with name, address. And it's just, it's mad because Billy should be able to query their system, log it, potentially even do a conflict check, and then get a reference number and then email them back and tell them who's going to be dealing with it, what the reference number is and when they should expect to reply. But at the minute, that's the only one that's stuck. Um, and somebody will come to me pretty quickly and say, our firm will do that for you and then we'll change and we'll move it over. So, um, but there are only two software systems for, 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 for barristers in the UK. Um, both of those have built APIs for us at, at, at nil cost. Um, and so this is really what Billy's doing. So it's 4,000 inquiries a month. That's gone up quite dramatically since I did the slide. Um, the, the, the courts, um, we're on 183 now because they're closing them. I have to check the database every day. Um, and there you go, really. So, I mean, that's, that's in a nutshell what, what, what he's doing. Um, somebody put their hand up at the last one and asked how much it all cost. Um, we've spent about 100,000 pounds. Um, so about $180,000 or whatever, um, but it's a one-off and, and, you know, as I said earlier, I mean, we would pay a junior clerk £20,000, something like that, starting. So, yeah, it's more expensive than, than a junior clerk, but all of the things we can now do, we're saving over 200 hours a, 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 a month. Um, and it's, you know, that's, that's, that's our example, really. but. The point, the point um, for everybody here is, is, you know, as I've said a few times, is, is just understanding what you're trying to get it to achieve and then understanding how you link that with the chatbot technology, with the API technology. Um, but it's, it's, all about, it's all about just understanding what the end solution might look like and then really going through the, the severe pain of all the steps uh, along the route of, you know, I, I felt like there was a jigsaw puzzle on the table. And, and, and everybody, you know, there was at least 200 pieces of this puzzle to put this together. And, and you know, somebody will say, well, we can't do that bit yet. And, and the puzzle's never going to be finished until you've actually done all that. So it was a, a lot of patience, which is why I had two months holiday, because it's been very stressful for the last two years. Um, but, you know, Billy's, I, I can log in on my app now and see what Billy's doing. Um, you know, and, and the other night I logged in and he'd done £18,000 worth of work overnight. Um, from the staff leaving at six to coming back in the morning and 18,000 pounds of the work had gone through Billy. Um, we, 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 you know, I'm just being really frank with you and, and, and open about this. So B Billy is, was designed as a fully automated system so that we do not need to check it. We haven't had the guts to, to leave it fully automated yet. He's never made a mistake yet. Um, if he makes a mistake, it's, it's because the barrister who has put in his parameters that he'll go to Scotland for one pound rather than a thousand and he saved it before he's finished it and so we do check every inquiry but it's a sort of 30 second check um, and it will say oh Michael Powers QC is willing to go to Truro for two pound fifty and we're like that's not right so it's not Billy that's made the mistake it's the it's the lawyer um, you know the, the human side of it so um, so yeah so we do we do review it um, We've got one firm of solicitors when I get back up in Wakefield who send us thousands and thousands of cases and we're going to allow them to be fully automated when I, when I go back. I want to oversee it myself um, and that would be interesting. Um, and that's a sort of, again, people think, oh, you're, you're just trying to, you know, you're, you're dumbing down the job we do or whatever. But, but no, Billy gets it right every time. It's obviously got our knowledge and, and IP behind it and the solicitor's getting a real benefit because 
for the lawyer to, you know, they, they send us thousands of cases. For them to ring up and actually speak to us and, and give us all that information every time is costing them a fortune as well. Um, and so, you know, they're looking at doing that and a couple of insurance companies and whatever. So, I mean, that's it really. Um, as I said, it w won't take an hour if nobody asks questions. So, <laughs> I don't think there's any more slides. Uh, what are the benefits now? 1.6 billion searches instantly, 167 actions, 200 hours a month, uh, 10 minutes on average per inquiry, um, and he's now managing 1,500 hearings. What's next for Billy? Um, who knows? <laughs> um, and I'm really serious about that because we, 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 we're now at a stage where you know a member of staff will say, wouldn't it be great if he could do this? Or a, a client rings up and says, can you build it to work with our system? Um, but natural language processing, I think, is, is really important. Um, and the online courts are round the corner, however long that is. Um, and Billy will be ready. So, you know, he can... What, what I, what, where I want to get to is that Billy intercepts without anybody knowing the message. And if somebody's saying, how about, could you get someone to do this case? He's checked the court, checked the listing check what the time frame is and then he can be going back to the list saying that's fine but we're going to have to do a skeleton argument in, in this time or this time and that person can't do it. So I think being fully interactive with the courts when the courts do go online will be a massive opportunity for us. Um, a more practical help for the barristers booking train tickets for instance we should be able to do pretty quickly route ma managing and managing their personal events and so on because if we've got train Billy to do it we can get their cars washed we can get them in for service we can do all that um, and th there's, there's no reason why not it's just a little bit of extra thought um, and that's all stuff that comes off our plate um, so there you go so that's it thank you very much Steve. Well, <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.